here aka the voodoo child and i am back with another book review and this book has been requested to be broke down for a minute and i finally got around to reading the whole thing okay and it is the meaning of mariah carey i'm not trying to jump too quick into things because you guys know i provide videos pictures and stuff the reason why it took me so long to finish this it was all over the place i'm talking one second we're in her childhood the next, we're uh, living in the Manhattan skyscraper. I had to literally put stuff in order in my head to make it make sense. So yeah, I'm gonna put the book down, but I'm gonna be referencing my phone a lot because that's where my notes are. I'm just gonna get right on into it. Make sure you guys have your snacks, your wine. I, I think this is gonna be like a wine down type of uh, breakdown type of thing, like, because it's Mariah Carey, you know. Full disclosure, I love Mariah Emancipation of Mimi was like my album and E equals MC Square because I'm, I'm a, you know, I'm younger. I wasn't a Mariah fan in the 80s or nothing. I wasn't even on this planet. So <laughs> the first thing that I'm going to start off with is family. The main reasons why I love reading memoirs is because I want to know the inner working. I want to know on some Joe Jackson, Michael Jackson ish, like what type of roughness built the diamond? Like, because usually unless you're a Nepo baby, it's, you know, I just want to know what type of trials and tribulations that people have gone through. So I always am down to read a uh, rags to riches memoir. So with Mariah, I'm down. She's a fellow New Yorker type of deal, you know, born in New York. Mariah did express that she moved around a lot. And um, because of her age, a lot of people may not know this because she looks so youthful, but she was still around at a time in the most ethnically diverse place where it was still low key segregated. Did you move into a black neighborhood, white neighborhood, mixed neighborhood? Initially, we moved into a white neighborhood, and I was the person who purchased the house because we knew that if he came with me, we wouldn't get the house. There wasn't anything overt that happened in that house. But then I thought, you know, I looked around the neighborhood and I said, what a way to raise two children. There are no black people here. Let's find a mixed neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And you did? Impossible. It was well, I mean, we went to a mixed neighborhood, and then what happened was the black children didn't like my children because one of them looked whiter than the other, and the white children didn't like the other child who looked a little darker. She was made fun of a lot because she does not look like a typical biracial girl. She is very very much white passing and everybody let her know about it. I didn't want to make this a whole topic, but I'm going to include it in family, the family thing. You know, I'm not gonna make it a whole thing, but you do see remnants of it throughout the book. Unlike, like, not unlike, like a lot of biracial children, the topic of race is usually part of their coming of age, coming into self type of thing, because whether they were um, nourished in their racial identity or they look like a Mariah where they don't fit anywhere because they don't look like anybody. She did not look like her siblings and this is why I said I'm trying to handle this with grace. You know my mom uh, is biracial. I'm multiracial. I have like so I'm not trying to say I'm not trying to be mean when I say this but as a mixed kid I gotta say it, it was given very much everybody hated me because I was light-skinned like Mar Mariah genuinely believes that her siblings did not like her because like I'm talking on the juvenile basis how the hatred started because both of her siblings do not like her and we're gonna get into that at the end because there's some new drama some new 2023 drama that's going on so we're gonna get in that because this book came out in this book came out in 2020 during quarantine in like the winter of quarantine so this like just came out okay she just spilled the seed yeah she said that the reason why they don't like her is because they look different and when they go outside you know they're visibly not white and they get treated as such they resented you because of the color of your skin right because they were also biracial but you were lighter and they felt like you were passing 
I, I think they definitely always felt like I was passing. We are not even that far apart tonally. Like, that's my thing. They just grew up with the experience of living with a black father and a white mother together as a family. And I was, for the most part, living with my mother, which they saw as easier. But in reality, it was not. They get called certain names. They get spit at. They get beat up. Meanwhile, Mariah can easily blend in. She can go to the store with her mom, blend in. And people really don't know her tea unless they, like, come home. You get what I'm saying? And see her family and her other siblings. So she said her siblings don't, didn't like her because she was light-skinned. I feel like something's missing in the origin story. Like, I feel like... I don't know. I don't think it has all to do with just the fact that you're light-skinned and white-passing. That they didn't like you. You also admitted that you did get favoritism. And that your mom's family actually did fuck with you and not nobody else like you gotta at least admit from that place of privilege that you know people can be cross with you now to do what they did to you out of pocket her brother from what the book said he has a temper on him ever since he was a kid freaking beating down the damn block trying to beat up the grandmama the grandmama's the baby the sit like a whole mess then the sister before I read the book, somebody told me that, and trigger warning, somebody told me that the sister SA'd her, and I didn't really understand until I got done with the book completely. The sister set her up to get SA'd by a pimp in exchange for money or whatever, right? That was when their relationship fractured. You say, but when I was 12 years old, my sister, this was a story, my sister drugged me with Valium, offered me a pinky nail full of cocaine, inflicted me with third degree burns and tried to sell me out to a pimp. She was like an older sister who was on some like, oh, you think you grown now? You think you can hang type shit? We didn't grow up together, but we did. Like they were on their journeys. By the time I got into the world, you know, they had already been damaged. When you know this girl is only like 12 and you're like 20 something, like, what are you doing? I could see in a way how technically her sister also SA'd her because she knowingly put her in there. I mean, what would you call a girl who befriends another girl and then tricks them in the street, tricks them into get, getting with a pimp? Like, it's the same thing just because they're sisters. Like, so yeah, that was just very sad to hear and it seemed like the mom just was and as as does happen with a lot of single parent kids that come from single parents me included it takes some time to to um especially if you were really really close with the parent that is not raising you type of thing to realize that you were low-key like abandoned in a sense like I don't think Mariah in the book feels like her dad, her late father, you know, rest his soul. I don't think she feels like he abandoned him, but I could beg to differ that she experienced all that turmoil because the dad left. Your brother was the man of the house and he had no example of what manhood was and he was doing all this fun shit. Your dad wasn't there when you was riding around with another grown ass man with your sister who already was up to no good, who's a teen parent herself, should be taking care of her own damn kid. But no, she's running around with you being a horrible influence. Like, a lot of people need to take responsibility, you know? A lot of people need to take responsibility. It's, I know it's really hard when you come from a toxic family, especially when you have poverty involved and then you finally do get money. You think that like, oh, well, I got money now. Like, I can make it better. Like, I can make mom like me. And I felt so much for Mariah, like, because that's how a lot of us kids feel when we come from a broken home. Like, well, maybe if I act perfect or if I do this and I pay for that and I build the home myself and there's no way it could go wrong. And she thought that she could include her day one abusers because that's what they are. Your day one abusers, you're going to bring them with you to the top. When people start doing things like dedicating an album to me, you know, to make themselves look good, you know, um... I'm sorry, I just think that that's kind of um, beneath contempt. So sure enough, they start doing some crazy stuff. Um, I'm going to get into that with the scandals because unfortunately a lot of Mariah's scandals have to do with her family. Like, they are haters. They are some hating ass bitches. Like, I don't see how you could get properties, cars, plane ride, like apartments. I, 
lavish vacations, going to award shows, but her mama got drunk at an award show trying to embarrass her on purpose. Luckily, no tabloid saw, but it's just like little stuff like that. You gotta cut off the cancer. Sometimes when you make it, you can't bring everybody with you, including family, especially if they ain't ever had shit and don't know how to act and they just see you as a lick. Like, hell no. So the racial tension with the family, she talked about a lot, like how she, because you gotta think she's white passing, so her walking around with her mom, who's her primary parent, doesn't cause much of a stir. But she did say a time where she brought a friend over to her dad's house and the little white girl like cried and her mom had to mariah's mom drove there and picked the girl up and left like there were a lot of like little microaggressive stuff um with race in the book like i said i'm trying to think of something else i just really didn't want to make that a whole thing because i know people hate when it comes to biracial mixed kids and you just be you know you be getting on them about stuff i mean we all have our identity issues and stuff don't get me wrong like as human beings we all have our identity issues because we did not choose to be born. But it's like, there was even one part in the book where she was like, I can't date rappers because I can't be seen as one of those girls. Like, and I know what she meant by that because she got so much pushback in the industry for sounding urban that she didn't want to come off like another girl fucking with a rapper, a hood rapper, a gang rapper at that. And it's just like, I don't know. I feel like it's just because Mariah's from a different generation, so she doesn't have the words to blatantly type out and say, yeah, I have internalized microaggressions because I look like a white woman. Like, you get what I'm saying? Because she is cool. She does have the culture. She did come from black people. She admitted that her mom did cut her off from a few people on her dad's side, but not everybody, you know? So I'm not saying she's not cultured, but race is social. You get what I'm saying? And little I did notice little things in the book here and there. But yeah, that's all I'm going to say about the family. More stuff will come out. But I just mainly realized from the family dynamic, they did not have a lot of money. Everybody was on some grimy shit. And ugh, the brother and the sister are on one. And as soon as Mariah got on, it was the mama joined in on being a snake. They also always looked for a... a, a I don't know what the name of it is, but it's like a get rich quick scheme or like, what can we do for today? Or like the world owes me something. And I feel bad for Mariah that she had to deal with that. And we're going to talk more about the family's drama later. Okay, so keep that in mind. <laughs> now I'm going to get into her abusive relationship with uh, uh, Matola, the, the exec guy. Actually, when I looked at their wedding picture, she looks so freaking beautiful in this wedding, even though she said it was like weird. This guy is, from what the book describes, top notch control freak to the point where i feel like she left some stuff out because there is no way in hell that a guy of this level of control and obsession would let you go that easily not put his hands on like put his hands on you like i don't believe that he ain't put it and i don't wish that on nobody i've been in an abusive relationship i don't wish that on nobody but it just does i just don't believe that a man with that much power and control to the point where he teamed up with your evil ass mama and your evil ass brother because your sister's still too busy thotting about in the street and not raising the kids. Allison's mother reportedly took the child because her daughter is an unfit parent with a history of drug abuse. When they went to the therapy session, that was surprising to me too, that he chose the therapist and he knew they needed to get therapy and all this stuff. And through the therapist, started giving her some freedom i just i don't know you've never been abused like that ever been hit by anyone anyone ever abused you abuse has several categories you've been emotionally abused emotionally mentally uh, why is it hard to get out of it well it's scary you know I just think you get into a situation and you and you feel locked in if your situation is similar to one of these situations I've been in, which I won't talk no, you're about. Not <laughs> you're talking about a guy that had military grade um, surveillance in the house to where the only place she could be in private is the bathtub and you just let her go like this. I don't know. I, I wasn't really allowed out of the house. 
But I felt it once I was there, when the, when the little situation left and her and Brett, they left the house. I could feel like, man, what the hell is this? Like, I was looking around like, boy, we're somewhere else that I didn't know. The way they get revenge is to try and destroy my album. And Tommy Matola is a devil. I'm not supposed to say what I'm going to say right now, but I, I have to let you in on a secret. Say it. Mariah Carey, after divorcing Tommy, came to me crying. She said to me that this is an evil man, and Michael, this man follows me, she said. He taps her phones, and he's very, very evil, and she doesn't trust him. And he is a horrible human being, and we, we have to continue our drive until he's terminated. I own half of Sony's publishing, and, and I'm leaving them, and they're very angry at me because of it, but um, I just did good business, you know? Oh, and yes, he did get back at her, like, industry-wise and stuff. We're going to talk about that later, too. I don't know. He could have always done that without marrying her. Like, I feel like she left some stuff out and you know he has the nerve to try to come with like he didn't show any of our good times blah 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 but i really feel like she spared your old humpty dumpty ass because it just don't sit right with me that's just like a weird narky type of control like dangerous that's like on some netflix i am a stalker level like she couldn't do anything anything like just imagine having all this money never seeing it never being able to go out anywhere be a normal 20 something because they also had an age gap and then sure enough like i said the mama is on board and when she came to her was like yeah mom i'm getting married she never even said hey you know you're young she wanted her daughter to marry for money not for love and again like i said when you come from nothing Sometimes, even when you are a parent, you do not make the best fucking choice. You be on some selfish survival mode shit. And she low-key sacrificed her daughter to Sony Music, the Sony record label. And Mariah went out and built this bitch a cottage in Westchester. And I'm just like, why? Why are you keeping these up? But I'm so glad that she got out of it. New home for the first time. And my only, the only home I've ever owned alone. Cause I owned one with someone else before, but that burnt down. <laughs> but I did own it, actually. Paid by half of everything too, but nobody knows that. Uh. Tidbit. <laughs> I don't know how she even got that man to sign divorce papers. Like, oh, and technically she cheated on him. Let's talk about that. Yeah, let's get into the scandals. Because I'm not gonna lie, she spent a long time <clears throat> talking about her come up, her and Tommy and all that stuff, but like, child, I was ready for her to get about that relationship. I was like, oh my God, like, what is keeping you here? Like, why is he doing, I would have been like, look, I need a lawyer on the slide in the therapy session. I'd been like, I need a lawyer. I can't do this anymore. Like, what are we doing? But yeah, I get it. When you're in an abusive relationship, it's not easy. And she did say that was the only relationship she's really ever been in for real, like, so she didn't really have a rule book of what was normal and what was not normal. That's her ther the therapist was like, this is not normal. This is not how men act. <laughs> like, girl, I wish that therapist just would have been like, girl, you're hot. You're young. You're popping. Dump them. And then it's funny because I said this in the Jeanette McCurdy book review as well. I feel like a lot of these Hollywood therapists are just out to get um, backstage passes and not really here to help. Because Mariah even said like the relationship started out good, but then it just, it got weird, right? It got weird with a the therapist. And she says she has a good therapist now, but which is good because we're about to get to the scandal. Do -do -do. If you're a Mariah Carey fan, even pre-internet, like internet gossip blog bullshit, you would know that she has like a few scandals under her belt. The main scandals are TRL, Eminem, her, and Nick Cannon beefing, okay? And then J-Lo, I don't know her. She talks about J-Lo in the book, so we're gonna do that first. She literally, I had to highlight it because I thought that was so funny. I highlighted it in here because I'm like, this girl is so petty. When her and Tommy broke up, she said she heard when they got divorced, like it was final. After hearing my new song using the same sample I used, Sony rushed to make a single for another female on their label, whom I do not know. And they released a song with Ja Rule. Girl, she ate J-Lo ass up. She didn't talk about J-Lo at all. And if you guys don't know, the ongoing joke is that whenever interviewers try to pit them together and bring it up, Mariah will respond with, I don't know her. Was ist mit J-Lo? Die kenne ich nicht. 
I don't know the woman. I, I still don't know her. Yeah. Yeah. The same it's a big deal out know, of it. Do you know each other? No. no. And the reason why is because J-Lo slithered in right after the divorce. More so Tommy manipulated J-Lo into playing a role. That's my opinion. Manipulated J-Lo into playing a role of the new Sony girl. And J-Lo has the look. She's from New York. Think about it. She, everybody always used to say Mariah looks Puerto Rican. J-Lo's Puerto Rican. Like, it's so obvious, but J-Lo can't sing. So he stole some vocals, stole some beats, and now J-Lo is born. And J-Lo at this point be so aggravated, like, girl, you know me at this point. And Mariah's like, girl, I just still don't know you. Like, I really don't know who you are. She's just forgetful, I guess. Yes. <laughs> uh, I don't know. We've met many times. Uh, I don't know. I don't know her that well. Okay. You, she says thing. you know her. Okay, I know she, you know what? I'm very forgetful. Okay. Apparently. <laughs> and I know some people might think it's petty, but when you read the book and you see how passionate Mariah was about her craft, like her writing, she writes her own stuff. And even before she was somebody, she knew that her writings meant something and she didn't sell them to even establish singers, sorry, that she already knew. So I know that Tommy knew that's where they really hurt her. Ja Rule, you got J-Lo, and that was uh, I'm Real love the Remix. Boy, which come on and love me. The hell's that? Okay, so we're finally about to get into the TRL situation. So Mariah describes this as like a complete misunderstanding almost. And the way she describes it in the book, it kind of forced me to go on YouTube and Internet's Forever Child. I had to go and look it up myself like did this really go down the way I remember it happening because I don't remember Mariah being in the nude I do feel like she was wearing brown though and maybe that's why we collectively remembered it like that but I also do remember her being just like very like a manic state like just very bouncing off the walls not making sense here I'm gonna play it touch me, touch me. I don't know. What are you doing here? Is the question. I'm here. Can you hold this? Yeah, sure. I brought your present. It's this shirt. Mariah Carey is stripping on TRL right now. Is it my birthday? I didn't know about it. Wow. You like this? Holy mackerel. You like this? Hey, can we get the AC cranked down? The AC, crank it down. Get nice and cool. Wow. You uh, like this? What, what are you doing? What did you bring? I'm trying what? to. You're my therapy session right now, Carson. Okay, you what's see, it's every now and then. Somebody needs a little therapy. Yes, I understand that. And today is that moment for me. <laughs> what's wrong? You weren't, Everything's Aren't late. you busy? You just came by TRL right now? I did not no, know about just, this. We're just here. What is this? You brought is this ice cream? Is this it's an ice cream truck. See, they had decorated this. Wait, try to avoid shots because these shorts are really yeah, short. Yeah, just don't move. Just Talk no, about no, the ice no. cream. But we got to discuss this. Okay. Things are right, from here. Move. I won't move. But they, see, these ain't my, these are just some folks on the nice street. But we like this. Right, um, Gary's okay. lost her mind. I don't know exactly what's going on here. All Crazy. I know is I'm just trying to like, I just wanted one day off when I can go swimming and look at rainbows and like eat ice cream. Right, right. And, and maybe like learn how to ride a bicycle. Yeah, we're gonna have to help you out with that <laughs> one. I don't know right. how, but there's no ice cream left for me, huh? We have one for you tucked away. We gotta watch uh, your right. video, lover boy. But, but everything, everything oh, yeah, for have... my mom. Is that, is that in this segment? Uh, sure. Do my mom better be watching She's gonna be mad at me. We're not going by any particular segment at this point, I don't think. Oh, it's what do you gonna, have? We're gonna... here? Yeah, we're yeah, winging yeah, yeah. Okay. In more ways than I hope my mom's watching this. Who wants a shirt? Anybody? Easy, easy. Careful, careful. Easy, easy. Take it slow. Take wait, guys, wait, wait, wait. It's an ice cream truck. Look at the ice cream truck. I bought, I bought everybody presents. Hold right, on. right here. I gotta go to break. They're killing me. I didn't know about this. We'll be right back with Mariah Carey on TRL unexpectedly passing out ice cream. I mean, I don't like, I'm gonna say it. I don't care. I mean, everybody has book critiques. No one's except. I just don't like how she played that incident, incident down because that would have been a really good moment to open up more about her mental health, her bipolar, um, stuff like that. I feel like, and I'm not talking about how when she talked about the famous people that came to her in need at this time of her life, like I'm not trying to be nosy on that type of shit. It's just it would be really inspirational to see somebody with bipolar disorder who's had public manic episodes like talk about it. The most she said was like, please fans, please rest assured that I do have a good doctor. I'm on a good plan. I'm stable. I could be a mother. I could, you know, I've dealt with the past. Like, 
it that's just so awesome to me but i'm not gonna lie it would have been beneficial for it to have like a name on it because this breakdown just reminded me of bipolar to the t she was exhausted could not sleep no matter how hard she tried she could not sleep was performing day after day after day after day needed aids to sleep still couldn't sleep she was experiencing psychosis from lack of sleep she's seeing stuff and everything she's easily irritable lashing out her mom as she should have in that incident in the cottage um that was another thing that was broadcasted about her having her mental breakdown at her mom's house and that's actually what got her admitted into psych so she does go into detail about psych and like how she doesn't really remember much again it's just such a fog i don't remember the mental health stuff they were just trying to put me away and i don't know let me know those of y'all who read the book and i'm really hoping everyone that watched this read the book or you know what i'm saying or at least is a fan so i'm not just talking to the ether is it just me or was she low-key like alluding to conservatorship vibes from her family because the only reason she got out of psych is because 9 11 happened and i think that's where that meme came from the no 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 well you don't want to hear about 9 11. Because 9-11 literally was when she got released from psych and she got to get sent home because it was just all too real, she said. And she was like, I don't understand how if I really needed this much treatment and stuff that this would make me be able to go home. Um, so I think she was insinuating a conservatorship for sure with this. Like they were trying to push her to a scandal to get her into a conservatorship. Let me know what you guys think. But I think that's what she was low key trying to insinuate right but yeah i do feel like trl did invite her there and did not tell the host as a surprise but she was under so much pressure from the glitter release that i do feel like it triggered a manic moment she had been on go for so long she had never been second place at anything she's perfection she's such a perfection like it just seemed like the perfect storm but for them to be like she was naked all that stuff no that did not happen but it was frantic. It was a moment, girl. We all have them. Okay, so the next major, major one is if you guys know why you so obsessed with me. Eminem and Mariah Carey. Eminem swear up and down he had a little piece of Mariah Carey back in the day. I don't know why, especially after reading the book. She was very flirtatious, but she specifically made sure to not sleep with rappers because they would talk she even wrote that in her book they the rappers talk honestly i can tell you by getting to the end of this book i still don't know what's fact or fiction i still don't know if she hooked up with him um and i'm actually really shocked that she didn't bring it up in the book because that's like the biggest mystery and unfortunately mariah carey made it that way you had a whole album of multiple songs talk about he obsessed with her and then nick cannon came out of his uh a Nickelodeon-esque great value rap career and started making disses. Girl, you even had Gucci Man come out and say he was gonna fuck up Eminem if he didn't shut the fuck up. Like, you had Gucci Man sticking up for you more than your man. Like, the way she was acting, I low-key believed it happened, you know, for a bit. And I'm like, girl, you're tripping. I mean, every girl, or excuse me, every grown-ass woman, because you were grown as hell, has, has a few bodies you wish you didn't have, okay? Like, let's keep it a buck. But now I, I just honestly don't know if it happened or not. And if it did, she dead ass wrong for making Nick think he crazy. Like, it's, I don't know. So now I'm going to branch off. I was going to make this a whole little uh, another section as well with the boyfriends. But I'm going to keep it in the scandal because it was a little salacious. It was like the scandalous part of the book, okay? So these aren't her like her scandals but it was the more salacious part of the books where I felt that Mariah did get vulnerable and oh my god when she was talking about Derek Jeter for one like I mentioned earlier for like two seconds she cheated on her husband with Derek Jeter now if Mariah's watching this video somehow on the ether hey boo but emotional cheating is cheating even if your spouse is an asshole a controlling asshole right she was sneaking and geeking with Derek Jeter they were not hooking up she said there was only kissing and dry humping okay that's what she said she liked him because of his ethnicity at first because she had never met anybody with her same ethnicity which is really funny because I know a lot of New Yorkers who are black and Irish or black and Italian I don't know maybe it's because I'm younger and she grew up in a different New York I don't know Derek Jeter surprised me because I was like that's a very mainstream person and in new york so I, that really surprised me they look really cute together 
um but yeah it just wasn't compatible and i like how she said like you know a basketball player girlfriend and a football player girlfriend are two different things well a baseball player wife and a baseball player girlfriend is literally like a whole different breed of woman and it is not a pop sensationalist glamour it's not her so i get what she said it's like their worlds just didn't match but yeah she said she really just did not do that for real to the point where like when she was hanging out with debrat and everything it's like she was a big kid because she never had a chance to like be normal and like have girlfriends and go on joy rides and go get fast food and get your nails done you know like she's never had that so it doesn't surprise me that she doesn't have like tons and tons of boyfriends I don't know and that's just reading it just seeing how she operates in the dating field how she's very selective of even who she kisses I don't know I just really doubt that Eminem hit because it seems like she's very grateful even if you're not Mr. Right it seems like she's very grateful for the little qualities you bring to the table while dating her like I don't know I fell in love with Mariah girl <laughs> Nick Cannon did not even get any play in this book y'all he didn't get no play in this book I was so confused like I was like wait a minute all this drama but I guess if you take out Eminem you can't really talk about Nick for real because she only talked about him like a sperm donor like he popped up in here and dropped him off some babies and did I really didn't appreciate how he treated her during her pregnancy from what she described it seemed very insensitive very misogynistic and I'm not surprised now that we see the the Nick Cannon as a father today because back then we didn't have an example of Nick as a father now we see oh yeah this dude is so such a sperm bank he don't even remember one of his baby's names when you ask him Howard Stern embarrassed the fuck out of him a few days ago and you know their names all everyone's name I can name all of course can you can name, name all every of your kid. kids I'm now, gonna test you, you. I got the, I got the well, hold on, Mar rock, Moroccan and that. Monroe, which we call Rock and Roll, Golden, Rock. Powerful, and then Zion, Zillion, Zen. That's correct. And then from there, we, yeah, there's Legendary. Then there's Legendary then Love. Rise, legendary yes. Love. Then there's Rise. You left out Onyx Ice Cold. I, oh, no. You know what? I did. I, that's, you did. He embarrassed himself, child, because you shouldn't even been on that nasty ass man show. Yeah, Mariah said that all, if it wasn't for Nick's mama, Nick's mother supported her in her pregnancy. And she just was explaining how sweet Nick's mom is and everything and just how Nick just was disconnected and didn't really treat her like a like a woman more like an incubator type of deal and she said she didn't even want kids before nick and he's the one that came around yeah we need to do this like hey but from the book from what she said she was really in love with him i always thought they were a very odd looking pair i'm gonna keep it a buck with you i always thought they were very odd looking um it's like you know how two people could still be attractive but just together it, they just don't match like yeah because and i'm talking drumline nick cannon not this turban bullshit he got going on now i don't know and i like turbans i got a few over here actually it's just him just don't look right on him but yeah she had no desire of having no kids until she met him it doesn't seem like she's that bothered or has any regrets because the kids are kind of like they're here they're awesome and she's happy being a mom so i mean it is what it is i saw her performance when she was pregnant i was like damn girl go girl go you so now i'm going to get into these lawsuits so the book has been out and the girls are mad like you guys saw in the family portion mariah's sister has just been at the media's throat since the 90s trying to do a woe is me tour because of her illness her shortcomings in life her jealousy with her sister and basically playing the blame game um saying like i need to be taking care of my superstar sister all this stuff right um then you've got her mom in the media like trying to play this role and like then you got her brother who low-key slick stays behind the scenes but just close enough on the edge to where he can benefit from this whole ordeal right well the brother and the sister are now coming forward with their own lawsuits they're like look this is defamation they're causing all this emotional distress people know who we are 
Um, there are lies told. Mother Morgan Carey has filed a defamation lawsuit against her, and a judge is allowing the lawsuit to move forward, although they have dropped all claims except for two. While the lawsuit is moving forward, Justice Barbara Jaffe at the Supreme Court in Manhattan rejected most of the claims, which in legal terms really um, undermines the, the legitimacy of the claims that were initially put forth. Um, Morgan Carey, who is suing over defamation um, for claims made in Mariah Carey's memoir, The Meaning of Mariah Carey, uh, according to Reuters. I will say, though, the judge dropped over seven claims. That is a lot, including yeah. one claim that states um, that there was something defamatory about Mariah mm -hmm. saying that her brother got into a physical altercation with their father and that police had to be involved. But the judge said no claim there. So mm -hmm. uh, what are the claims that did stick? You know, I don't think they've released a lot of I'm that so information curious. yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they it's know. just That's a shame. I know, but it just again, it just feels like. You come in for the pocketbook, exactly what they yeah, said. Yeah, that's a shame. It's yeah, her brother. It's and the sad thing is, is I had a feeling this was going to happen because at the end of Mariah's book, she does make a little dedication and she says that she loves her brother. She loves her sister. She said, I love y'all. Like, I mean, yeah, this shit happened, but I still love you guys. It is what it is. It just felt like that little girl, like that last little people pleaser moment of like, please don't be mad at me, but this is my truth. Yeah, I already knew it was about to be game over, but I really thought it was going to be the mom. But I forget just how much time has gone by. Like, the mom don't got no strength to fight. She's just going along with what other people are saying. Because shit, she was doing that back when she was calling the police on her own daughter, on some white woman shit. Like, and that's Mariah's voice. That was Mariah's words. That her mama was on some white woman shit and called the fucking police. Like, who does that? On their own children with all these black people in the house. Anyway, um, yeah, so they're going forward with their own. We're gonna say, I'm pretty sure this suit is gonna get thrown out. I'm sure it's gonna get thrown out because it's not like Mariah was in the book calling them out their name, like calling the sister um, a junkie or, you know, anything like that. If anything, she did empathize that, you know, these people got dealt a certain hand. But I don't see how what she said could win them anything in court. Like, I'm gonna keep it a buck. Like, she even said in the book, these people like to sue. So that was like, girl, you should have seen this coming to my way. She probably already did. She's like, girl, I had a little chunk laid to the side for y'all when I was in publishing. Because I knew y'all were coming with your broke asses. And it's not even broke money. It's like, you're broken. Like, you are a broken individual. Y'all are some broken ass people. And I'm glad that Mariah is able to end this cycle with her own kids and not be, you know, this toxic force. Yeah, that's pretty much it for the uh, meaning of Mariah. Again, I give this book, um, uh, I mean, I wish it was a little bit more juicy. I'm not gonna lie. I wish it was giving more things that like we didn't know already. Um, I wish it would have got a little bit more into the Eminem thing, a little bit more about Nick Cannon and how she feels about all the babies and stuff. Oh, and I wish she would have got in a little bit more about the J-Lo situation just to be petty. So just to be like, girl, well, here you go. Now I know who you are. There you go, bitch. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you guys so much for listening to my long behind movie. Well, not movie, but this is a movie girl. Book review. And uh, I will see you guys next time. Peace. And thank you to everybody that suggested. Every